Hello and welcome to the third and final episode of the story thus far. This one is for party three, Blood and Bubblegum. Uh, for those new, uh, this is Dog Pound Dungeons and Dragons, which is a unique set of D&D games where all three parties play in the same game world together at the same time. How they impact the world can be experienced and visited by the other parties, as well as crossover episodes, which Party 1 and 3 have had as well. You can see all those episodes up after this on YouTube. They directly pers uh, go after this one. Uh, today, like I said, Blood and Bubblegum, Party 3, we are going to have Cyrus uh, telling us the story uh, from start to the point where they met up and reached the falls uh, with Party 1. So go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, Cyrus. What's poppin', gamers? Um, so Cyrus Malkovich is a human soldier who is no longer a part of the military that he was in. And... Um, kind of went the, the route of darkness rather than trying to just enlist in a different town's military and became very, very strong in that regard. Um, and then he made his way to Clastow seeking a, a worthy challenge and some financial compensation, trying to earn a living. And that's where he encountered uh, three people uh, one was Aaron, who was a dwarf artif artificer. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that word correctly. Artificer, um, maybe? I, I never... I, I always want to say artificer, but I, I think that's wrong. Um, <laughs> then uh, young elf, which is a little bit of an oxymoron because he's almost 100 years old, uh, wizard, and uh, another human uh, who's about the same age who is a monk. And they all kind of arrived just at the same time to class style. They hadn't encountered each other before then and made their way to the local local watering hole to look at the job board and see what options were available. And they found three quests uh, that were posted on the job board, all of which were recommended to not do alone. Uh, I believe they each said recommended at least four people. And it's such and, a coincidence that there were four exact people in your party. Yeah, it's almost like the DM prepared for Oh, that. shit! <laughs> almost like I prepared it on the spot. <laughs> right. And uh, so the, the job that the they were all eyeing and agreed to to take on together was to eliminate the hill giants up in the mountains near Clastow. And so they left the next morning after some drunken debauchery and made their way up to uh, the, the side of the mountain. As soon as they got up this almost like a cliffside elevator, uh, <laughs> they encountered some resistance from the hill giants. Um, yeah, including... what were some of those names, if you recall? I, I honestly I don't remember. I just remember one of them was a jerk. Uh, because well, he was Starbuck. Starbuck was the one Baked I was me. thinking of. Duncan. Basically just coffee store names. <laughs> there you go. That makes sense. We we fought off the coffee mob. And then uh, part of our mission was to retrieve their their left ears as proof of killing them. So there was a lot of minor scalping going on as we were removing their ears. Uh, we, <laughs> as we made our way up the cliffside, we, actually, we encountered a, um, a, a rather large woman um, by the name of Fran. Delanoskovich. Yeah, and Fran took a liking to Icarath and uh, tried to... I thought it to... took a liking to Aaron. Was it Aaron? I thought it was... I'm pretty sure it was Icarath because Icarath was traumatized after that. It might have been. I just assume I just assume that Icarath is normally causing the trauma. He usually is. So it, was, <laughs> it was nice for him to get some just desserts. Um, and then so we we took out Fran and her accompanying entourage in the most violent way possible. And that's where Cyrus encountered uh, the sword that he has, which is uh, it was named Fran's Meat Beater. And I'll, I'll give full credit to the DM for giving it such a ridiculous name. <laughs> it, it was essentially a plus one greatsword. Um, and then they, they continued on their way so up. And, 
do what? But then it became so much more. It, we'll get to that. <laughs> Uh, so we, we continued our way up, and we actually came across a, um, a cave, and we, <laughs> due to some rather fortunate roles in combat, uh, Cyrus was basically cutting people in half with a single stroke of a sword and ripping their hearts out with his bare hand. And so it, it was just a bloody mess, start to finish. And we get to the back of this cave after retrieving the ears from those corpses that had been split in half. And we start to hear this uh, this murmuring about uh, from from a young kid about Lethandra. one of the goddesses, Lethandra. Yeah, the, the goddess of the morning or of light or something. I can't remember. Up yeah, my head. goddess of light. But, <laughs> but he was in a cage and all the people there kept him alive for some reason, even though they all wanted to kill him. I'll, I'll never understand the logic behind that, but we ended up rescuing him from his precarious situation. Well, I think they were going to try and him. ransom him, if I recall correctly. But it's one of that those situations where they bit off a bit more than they could chew with, with Callian. <laughs> Good old Callian. <laughs> so, so it was at that point that a... Uh, a young, I believe he's an elf. A young elf cleric joined our ranks. I think so. Kellyan is, according to his thing, not low. Uh, uh, yeah, half elf. Half elf. Okay. So we got uh, a half elf cleric to join our ranks. Uh, so then we uh, made our way out and eat up the mountain some more, and we came across a heavily wooded area, and. Uh, Due to some even more fortunate and hilarious roles, a uh, a snake that I believe was intended to be a boss yeeted itself off the side of the mountain. Yep, I was a boss. It didn't do very boss-like things. <laughs> it was just one of those things where it flew by our heads and we were like okay then but wait some there were very few people like there are some people i forget who that didn't even see it happen and they would not believe i, I don't remember which party members but half the party was convinced it never happened <laughs> i don't remember that part but i, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case <laughs> but especially with what's coming up next we uh we continued our way up a little bit further and uh, in preparing to make camp for the night, Cyrus used one of his Dark Knight abilities to called Detect Outsiders to see if there was any fey magic or uh, or any kind of magic, whether it was fey, aberration, anything like that nearby. And he detected fey magic coming from a tree. Uh, the and tree. due to some due to some hilariously terrible rolls. And a few bad decisions uh, like casting darkness over the whole area and then trying to wade in and find people by touch. Yeah, the, none of that went well. <laughs> uh, we, we put it up um, beguiled by the tree and when we awoke the next morning, um, Aaron was gone. Our, our dwarf artificer, artificer, whatever, however it's pronounced, he was gone. And the rest of us just basically were talking about how we're never going to speak of the tree. Um, but we continue. Little did there, you know. The little did I know. <laughs> right. <laughs> we, uh, we continued up the mountain and we actually came across a fortress. And we made uh, what would objectively be viewed as a terrible decision to try to siege the fortress because that was the hill giant home How'd that work out for you cyrus uh it took a ballista bolt through the gut <laughs> that was great yeah the, the thing had i think it was what three ballistae on top of it i think there were two yeah i think there were two in in the, the oh no two in the on... front one in the back yeah three total only two ever fired <laughs> yeah we we managed to get through that that was a shock, and uh, managed to do it without anybody dying. And <laughs> we we took a long rest. And Ikarath, um, during his guard watch, was <laughs> he he saw something he didn't believe, 
<laughs> which was uh, the tree that we had all been sitting in front of, riding atop the serpent that yeeted itself off the mountain, riding around the city. With Aaron stuck to its tail. With Aaron stuck to its tail. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and he didn't even know how to process it, so nobody else in the group actually knows about that. Yep. <laughs> but, um, and then we ended up investigating the town more, and we found kind of the, the main area... The, the boss's lair, if you will. Mm -hmm. There were guards. There was... Starbuck was there. There was a very, very large individual. And then there were women and children inside the the side houses. And that's where we fought a, uh, a magically enhanced monster. I can't even remember what it was called. I bet you, since uh, we haven't been back there, that it still exists. Uh, Big Baba Big Ganoush. Big Baba Ganoush. Yeah, that uh, that fight went pretty entertainingly um, because he was so tall. Oh, that look, most of our you attacks left, were you on left his two legs men behind and... alive. Did we? You oh, did. I'm there, let me. Uh, uh, yeah, no, you you left behind two people alive. There were two men to continue on providing for the village. There you go. Happy ending. Well, I mean, our, our primary our primary objective was Big Baba Ganoush's uh, left ear. So once we got that, we're like, all right, well, we got what we came for. Um, and we decided not to burn down the buildings, as tempting as it was. Yes. And then you made and it back there... to the pass where Tremius was. Yes. Um, and that's where we actually encountered the snake and the tree. But Aaron was not stuck to the tail anymore. Well, he was. And that, you watched him being eaten in front of you. It flipped its tail up, it? and then it swallowed it whole. Swallowed Aaron whole. Oh, okay. It was I thought a very he was sad eaten moment. before we started that fight. So, nope. Okay, yeah. So so our dwarf got eaten alive. Poor thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then we felled the snake, as and uh, the tree ran away with the assistance of a young giant who... Uh, came out of nowhere, a young giant sorcerer named Rosalind. And I think he, he's what, half storm giant? Half storm giant, half human, I believe. That sounds right. And 100% addicted to honey. Yes. Uh, Goliath is the official race, but storm giant Goliath, and human. Gotcha. Well, I think he's a storm sorcerer as well. That might be why I'm thinking of that. Maybe. Um, but yeah, so we encountered him and we brought him along with us because he was alone and 14 <laughs> and, um, not one of the people we were sent to remove the ears from yep. and made our way back to, uh, to class Uh, I believe we, somebody had, uh, rolled very poorly on perception and was convinced that there was a threat that wasn't actually there. Oh yeah. You guys booked it down and the then, fucking mountain. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then got a very high charisma roll with persuasion after their net, not one perception. And oh yeah. Convinced us all that, uh, there was in fact a threat. There was not. So we, <laughs> it was in fact not. We made it all the way down the mountain chasing a threat that didn't exist. Yep. But we got back to the inn and Cyrus told uh, the, the monk to uh, Wes to obtain or, or figure out which quest the group should go on next because they were all group quests, not solo adventures. And he retired to his quarters to um, commit, perform a ritual to impart part of his soul into Fran's meat beater, changing it to Cyrus's corrupted meat beater. Yeah. Which is... Well, it's gone now, but that's a different story. It still exists, just in pieces. If yeah. you keep watching further episodes on YouTube, you'll find out why and how it's basically become Lord of the Rings. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, so they, uh, the group, kind of went around and they were looking at or looking around town, and Callian was looking to perform his duties as a missionary of Lathandra, and they came across an encampment of. Um, half hill giants of the type that we had just got done attacking and they were poor destitute sickly and one of them had an, an illness that, a daughter 
one of the yeah. Herbert's daughter. Yeah, so Herbert's daughter needed uh, something like Heart of the Mountain, I think it was called, yeah. obtain or that existed within the Wyfall Mines. Yep. Which kind of steered West to accept the quest for investigating why there are wyverns in the Wyfall Mines. So, um, yeah. And then from there, we just made our way up that direction. With horses. With horses, we had uh, was a piano man and uptown girl were our two horses. Yeah, they're still wandering around the wild, somewhere between the Tower of Firestone's ruins and Baru's Keep. Hopefully, somebody's feeding them. They're foraging. They're getting by. Okay. So we made our way up to White Falls Mines, and uh, inside, or on our way to the mines, we got attacked by goblins. And one of the goblins, um, we we actually let live because he had surrendered. It yep. was very out of character for us. Oh, Cyrus was fighting it the whole time. Right. And uh, as we as we approached the mines, or as we came into the mines, we actually found the mines were inhabited by goblins. Mm -hmm. And unlike in uh, vanilla D and D in this campaign, goblins do not speak common. Correct. So the only one who was able to communicate with any of them was actually our young cleric, who does in fact speak goblin. And the uh, the goblins mentioned something to Callian that Callian was translating that uh, made Wes very, very concerned. And he kind of ran off after we agreed not to murder Hobo, the goblins. Again, very out of character. <laughs> yeah. But uh, and we all followed behind him, and he he summoned a boat, which was crazy. And uh, we rid the boat all the way back. And he was explaining that you know he uh, as a human he was actually raised by gnomes, and the gnomes were believed to be extinct by the general population. Um, but they were just hidden deep, deep, deep within the White Falls mines. And you passed by Tremius completely unawares. I mean, it, it would have just been an attack on Tremius. Well, yeah. I just, I, I, I really like that it's amusing that you went past him. Not once, but twice. Including one time where he was humming songs to himself. Well, you know. <laughs> but we'll continue. <laughs> Every Everybody needs a mascot, you know. Yeah, you guys found gnomes riding wyverns. Yes, and that was crazy because, um, first of all, wyverns in the caves rather than in the skies was, was kind of weird. And then them being tamed and ridden by gnomes was even more crazy. <laughs> Big Ronda and Tentra cool. So you guys got into the city. You guys met with the gnome ruler. How did yeah, that he go? Was kind of a, he was kind of a jerk. Um... <laughs> He, he's like, well, you know, he got really mad at Wes because Wes had divulged that the gnomes weren't actually extinct to people who aren't gnomes. Yes. So he, and, uh, he bound you guys not to be able to leave the city or speak of anything about the city uh, upon threat of strangulation spell, um, which you guys are all cursed with. Uh, I believe you met Wes's parents and then... Icarath had a unique adventure. Yes, so Icarath uh, bought mushrooms from the innkeeper, and um, he shouldn't have done. He should not have done that. <laughs> um, Unknown that... to Cyrus, he went back later and found and harvested mushrooms and sold them to the innkeeper. Yeah, that was that was clever. Uh, <laughs> the um, but he he got really really high and he saw a kraken with a beard pop out of the river. And orange went, beard, orange yep. dwarvenly beard. Because in this and, camp world, krakens reproduce asexually, but they imprint features from their partners onto their eggs. <laughs> it's all magic, man. It is. <laughs> But uh, he ended up diving into the water to join the Kraken. And Cyrus, thinking quickly on his feet to keep Icarath from being drowned, 
launched a, uh, a witch bolt at the Kraken, which then released Icarath and swam away. Uh, we got Icarath out of the water and revived him. And then he dove back into the water. Correct. <laughs> and we, we, we spent a bunch of time basically just catching him, knocking him out, bringing him back to shore, stabilizing him, taking him back to the inn where he was tied to a bedpost and left. But you, but you guys did pay for a month of, yes. of, of the room and for him to be taken care of by the innkeeper. Just yes. to sleep and it off. And he, then he needed to sleep it off. Yes. And then you went back to the, to the king, to the gnome king. Yeah, we were going to be like, hey, dude, we got stuff to do. We kind of need to go. Like, we're not going to talk about you guys. We're, we're not going to put you guys in danger. But, like, you have magic that's already accomplishing that. And then everything went chaotic and a bunch of uh, monsters appeared in the city. And we had to go defend the Gnome City. Which you did quite valiantly in a long extended combat where things moved around behind the scenes that you had no idea about. And you were able to kill all of the aberrations and the horrors, Eldritch horrors, that had come. And you went back to the king. Yeah, and uh, we're like, do you believe us now? Yeah. And the king explained to us that all this was a result of the church of Nova Stoen doing their, their dastardly deeds. And told you and, where they got uh, the Krakens from. Yes. It's always nice when you're stealing Kraken eggs from cultists. Yeah. And uh, so he he uh, made us agree to take down the church and then allowed us to leave the city, which we did. You do still have a curse that if you speak of the city, however, it will kill you. Yes. On top um, of a curse that if you harm any kind of bush or tree, you are penitent. <laughs> I don't I mean, know how that much... one's almost over. That one's almost over. We're at like 75 of 90 in-game days on that. So following that, you guys left and started to head... Well, you guys, where were you going? You were going to... Well, I... So if I recall to correctly... to restock. Yes, and I think you were headed for Airford to investigate no. the cultists because that's the city for all uh, gods i think that was your your original or no Sifals maybe you were going we, we were going to go to fendal first like we were just gonna ping pong our way through but we ended up stopping off in rokoge yes and and that's where um I, I won't go into too much detail on this because we've already had the party one um story Sorry. thus far yep. we basically reviewed everything that had happened with party one and we took the ruins of the church that uh party one had eliminated in cali and reformed it into a church of lethandra with his own Dawnbringer sorrow and uh then the next day um rashok atop three dragons came in and burned to the ground the dog racing tracks and the church and uh <laughs> Callion in his uh, in his infinite wisdom trying to do the right thing I love him to death for it held up a symbol of the Church of Nova Stone that we had found telling them hey I'm with you guys don't attack me not realizing that that's exactly why they were attacking those things three dragons so, and a thick booty anime lady yeah, so after a uh, an anime self-sacrifice speech, Cyrus managed to uh, obtain enough time for the party to escape and uh, followed behind them, wondering why he was still alive. And they, <laughs> they escaped into the forest uh, south of Rokoge and managed to elude the dragons and um, made their way to uh, an old man, uh, Cranky, Cranky's capsized, that's where we went. It's an old dude with a boat. And um, he he allowed us to, uh, with the monetary support of Terry, Archmage of Queen Johnson, 
uh, agreed to give us passage as long as we paid our dues and our promise to Terry to be her wingman to set her up with uh, with Alvin. Yes, a long and, overdue date. Right. <laughs> well, you know, he thought she was dead, so you can't blame him too much. Oh, uh, there's a there's a good reason that he thought she was dead, and that's 100% because this was early D&D days, and I was like, I don't know what I can and can't get away with with forcing on you guys. <laughs> right. So, I walked a lot of stuff back that came back. <laughs> so we walked, uh, we rode this boat, and we encountered a sea serpent um, along the way, and we had absolutely horrendous rolls. People were falling off the side of the boat from that ones. <laughs> but who we, was the we hero? Were, Callian. Callian, I think, was the hero who saved... Uh, who, who did he say? Was it Rosalind? Uh, Rosalind was falling off. Callian reached out, like, hit the freaking, like, like the, the floor of that, like, I don't know, that thing, the, the pointy bit in the front of a ship. Hit that ground, reached out, grabbed Rosalind's hand, and then with one arm swung Rosalind back up through the air with Mama Bear strength onto a bench on top on the boat. Good old Nat twenties. <laughs> and with the serpent attacking uh, Terry Johnson did some damage. Yeah, uh, so Terry only is able to cast prestidigitation, but she's able to cast prestidigitation on different scales than most people. Um, and basically cast like a level 5,000 prestidigitation every yeah. time the serpent bit a piece of the boat out, ripping the parts of the boat that were uh, eaten out of the serpent's stomach and putting them back into place. So the, the ship survived and did not. <laughs> Somehow we all survived. You did. And, and you made uh, it to uh, we... Fendal. Yes. And in Fendal, um, not too much occurred we we really had gotten there we had gotten to the inn um and then at the end party one um the ne during that night fell through the roof yes because um Tremius released the spell that was holding them in the shadow realm and because they had traveled a fair distance in the shadow realm they traveled even further in the real world because there is not a one-to-one -one correlation in distance which meant that not only were they the wrong location from where they were, they were also the wrong elevation. <laughs> it's because is a coward who didn't want to face up to the the wrath of Jordiel. <laughs> and uh, and Thalrak, for that matter. <laughs> that's true. But, uh, so that's where we encountered Party 1, um, and we kind of realized, oh, hey, we're all kind of uh, in love with Alvin because of the stuff that happened in Party One. Yeah, we got or, uh, books written about him. We we found books, we found flyers, we found cupcakes. We we were very much like Alvin is a celebrity, and we were graced with his presence. Yes, and uh, we we managed to piss everybody off by referring to all of Alvin's teammates as his sidekicks <laughs> because that's how the book portrayed them. Yep, and. Uh, we, we ended up realizing, or we talked about the dragons that we encountered and um, that they were fly. We noticed that they were flying toward Safe Falls. So we all agreed to journey together to, uh, to Safe Falls and we used a teleportation circle within the city because mm -hmm. this is a city full of mages. Teleportation and, uh, mages specifically. Yeah, and uh, the the angry dragonkin or dragonborn, I'm sorry, angry dragonborn Voltir managed to uh, bump up the price by pissing off the teleporter dude. But oh, yeah. uh, Cyrus Cyrus was able to negotiate it down um, because of his time serving in the Fendal military, and then uh, teleported to Safe Falls where we had a few days to prepare for the the upcoming dragon and demigod siege. Yes, because you guys did uh, hear see Rashak flying across Fendal towards Safals, which is where you guys all decided to go together through that teleport, where you spent the next three days in character and one month out of character with joint sessions between Party 3 and Party 1. And that is all on YouTube. 
which will directly precede this in a playlist. Um, so you guys can watch up to the most recent episode all on YouTube. Um, we also have sessions every Monday, Friday, and Sunday, 6.30, 6.30 and 6 o'clock, respectively. You can see that on the screen in the bottom left as well. Um, and we hope to see you around. Um, thank you guys so much for watching the story thus far. Hopefully you continue on to the other videos. And uh, maybe we'll see you in Twitch. Uh, have a great day.